Hey everybody, welcome to The Trench. My name is Christian, and today we're going to talk about sharing Christ with others. Last week, we explored how Christ comes to the disciples, first through the opening of the scriptures, and then in the breaking of the bread. And as they break bread with him, the disciples actually become Christ's body, the church. After the disciples have their eyes opened and they finally recognize Christ, he disappears. But the next thing that they do is they run through the dark night back to Jerusalem to share the good news of Christ's victory over death with the other disciples. As his disciples today, as those who have become his body through the opening of the scriptures and the breaking of the bread and liturgy, we also are those who are called to share the good news of Christ with a world that lies in darkness. So let's wrap up this discussion about sharing the faith by looking again at Christ's interaction with his disciples in Luke 24. As we look at how Christ walks with them, we can gain five valuable insights as to how we as Orthodox Christians can share the good news of Christ with others. First, Christ approaches his friends on what is going to be a seven mile walk. This means that we are in for a long journey. Ministering to others, sharing the gospel is far more complicated than simply giving them a good book or the right argument to somehow convince them. It's going to be a long journey, so we need to buckle up. And this brings me to my second point. Christ doesn't approach strangers. He approaches his disciples, his friends, and they in turn go and tell their friends, the other disciples. As emissaries of Christ, we can only take this long journey with people if it happens within the context of a real relationship. As we talked about a couple weeks ago, faith is personal. That is, it rests in the person, not in the idea of Jesus Christ. So when we are called to share our faith in him, we're called to do so as persons, not as proponents of one idea or another. And as you'll recall, personhood emerges in relationship. We've all seen street evangelists and probably even felt pretty uncomfortable around them as we heard them share the so-called good news of how Christ loves us and how he died for us and how we better believe it or we'll burn in hell forever. Part of the reason this preaching is so shocking and often so distasteful is because it happens apart from any real kind of relationship. In fact, it's often done in a way that precludes relationship altogether, being far more frightening and coercive than it is warm and inviting. But remember, relationships are not simply tools of influence over others. We don't become friends with people so that they'll believe in Jesus. If this is what we're doing, we're not ministering to them. We're selling them something. We've become salesmen for Jesus, and we were never really their friends at all, because unconditional love isn't motivated by an agenda. And this brings me to my third point. We can avoid this trap of selling Jesus by becoming genuinely interested in others. And we do this by inviting them to articulate their experiences of death. Christ twice asks the disciples to tell him what they're talking about, to articulate the depth of their pain and their loss. As those who now stand in Christ's place, we too are called to share the sufferings of those around us, to bear witness to Christ's victory over death by not being afraid to enter into another's experience of death. As those united with Christ, as those who have become his body through baptism, chrismation, and holy communion, when we stand alongside others and share their suffering, this brings Christ into the midst of our relationship. And that leads us to the fourth point. With Christ present through the ministry of empathic listening, with a person's heart now open from having articulated their pain, this puts us in a position to do what Christ did, to tell the story of Christ. If we aren't careful, we can easily turn Christ into some sort of divine painkiller, a sort of theological pill to solve all our problems. But Christ himself doesn't promise us comfort. He doesn't use the law and the prophets to show us that life with him is going to be easy. By sharing the story of the suffering Christ, others can begin to see that Jesus does not stand aloof from them while they're in pain, but rather that he stands with them in solidarity, uniting himself to them through the commonality of suffering. As 19th century American poet Emily Dickinson said, When Jesus tells us about his father, we distrust him. When he shows us his home, we turn away. But when he confides to us that he is acquainted with grief, we listen, for that is also an acquaintance of our own. By telling the story of Christ, by bearing witness to Christ's own cross, those who themselves are not strangers to suffering can find their own stories of suffering swept up into the larger cosmic story, wherein the one who appears to be overcome by death emerges from the grave as victorious. The story of Luke 24, of course, ends with Christ revealing himself to the disciples in the breaking of the bread. Ultimately, we can't really make this part happen. Christ has to reveal himself. But there is something else that we can do, 
And this brings me to my fifth point. We can pray and trust Christ. After the disciples returned to Jerusalem, Luke tells us that the disciples were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Christ doesn't want our experience of him to be just one moment. He's inviting us into an ever-deepening relationship with him. As we continue to draw near to Christ through the opening of the scriptures, and as we become his body in the breaking of the bread, we can continue to share Christ with others in the context of a true relationship, as we seek faithfully to share the sufferings of those around us, trusting that as we stand alongside those who suffer, Christ makes their suffering his own. And as we do, we and those to whom we minister will see how Christ takes everything that is ours, a body, suffering, and death, and in his rich mercy gives us everything that belongs to him, his body, hope, and life everlasting. So join the fight, live orthodoxy, remember to like and subscribe, and join the rest of us inside the trench. Ends with the disciples having their eyes and lies in darkness. Personhood emerges in relationship. We've all seen street evangelists and probably even felt uncomfortable.